born of the flesh and born of the spirit. The fact of the matter is, we are all born of the flesh. The question is, are we also born of the spirit? That is what this subject is about, this service, where we look at the image and likeness of the Lord. In preparation, let me read some passages from the Lord's Word, having to do with his image and likeness. From the early part of Genesis. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Every time the Lord created on one of the days of creation, it ended by saying, and it was good. On the sixth day, when the Lord created humans, he said it was very good because all of creation is for the sake of our lives here on earth. We read further from the Gospel of Matthew, a portion of chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of the Father in heaven. He makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what more do you do than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. Image and likeness and perfection. Children. Do you know that an image shows uh, how the person appears? When you look in a mirror, you see an image of yourself. If somebody paints a picture of you, you see an image of yourself. If you see a photograph or a, a movie of you, you see an image of yourself. You don't see yourself. A likeness is much more important. Sometimes we take the two terms and say they're identical, but they're not. For example, in our lives, we are born in the image of the Lord. We're not born in his likeness. But if we follow the Lord's word and obey his commandments, we become more and more like him. That is how we become his likeness. So we're born image. We are reborn likeness. And that's what all religion's about. The Lord calls us to his kingdom, but we can't enter the kingdom until we become like him. And what does it mean to be like the Lord? To be good. Be good. And good is the expression of love. The more you love, the more you're like the Lord. The more wise you are, the more you're like the Lord. The more useful you are, the more you're like the Lord. And these are all what we will call internal or uh, the best qualities, most essential, important qualities. But there's also the appearance. How do you think the Lord looks? Is he ugly? Is he handsome? Extremely handsome? (laughs) We know from the Gospel of Luke 
where it, it's the only gospel that talks about the Lord growing up as a kid. And it mentions that he was tall and he was very good looking. And that's because the divine was in him. Very good looking. So often in this world, we look at other people and say, she's beautiful or he's handsome. And we all have our own criteria or reasons why we make that kind of judgment. What I think is beautiful, you might not. Or I might think someone is very beautiful, and you say, yeah, she's pretty. So there's differences. Because we judge more according to the image than we do the likeness. But even the image can be an expression of the likeness. I'm going to read to you one of my absolute favorite stories in the Lord's Word. This is from the early part of the book called Married Love or Conjugal Love, in which Swedenborg is describing marriage in heaven. He first talks about the husband and how handsome he is. But then he turns to the wife, and this is what he says. In the case of the wife, however, it took the following form. I saw her face, and yet I did not see it. I saw it as the very essence of beauty, and did not see it because the beauty was beyond expression. For there was in her face the bright glow of a blazing light, like the light possessed by angels in the highest heaven. And this light dimmed my vision, so that I simply was stupefied by it. Noticing this, the wife turned to me and said, what do you see? I answered, I see married love and a very picture of it. But I see and yet do not see. At this, she turned at an angle away from her husband, and then I could see, look more intently at her. Her eyes flashed with the light of her heaven, which is blazing. As I said, and so it takes quality from the love of wisdom. For wives in the highest heaven love their husbands on account of their wisdom. For wives in the highest heaven, uh, uh, in, in and the husbands love their wives as a response to it. The wife had her beauty as a result of this love for her husband. Such beauty that no artist could reproduce it, likeness, or portray it, likeness, in its true form. For a flashing of light like that is not possible with the painter's paints, nor is such loveliness expressible in art. Her hair was attractively arranged in a style to match her beauty, with jewels in the form of flowers inserted into it. She had a necklace of garnets from which hung a rosette of peridots, and she had bracelets of pearls. She was dressed in a scarlet gown and under it a purple bodice fastened in front with rubies. But what surprised me, the colors kept changing depending on which way she was facing in relation to her husband. And their sparkle also kept changing accordingly, being now more, now less, more when they faced each other and less when she faced away at an angle. When I had seen these things, the husband and wife spoke with me again. And when the husband spoke, he spoke as though at the same time on behalf of his wife. And when the wife spoke, she spoke as though on the same time on behalf of her husband. For such was the union of their minds from which comes their speech. It was then that I heard as well the way married love sounds, how it was inwardly together with and also the result of the delights of the states of innocence and peace. Angels are beautiful or handsome, but some are more beautiful and some are less beautiful. Some are more handsome, some are less handsome. Why is that? According to the Lord then, what is the essence of what we call beauty? And it's love. It's love. The angels of the highest heaven are the most loving. So they're the most like the Lord. The angels of the middle heaven love the Lord, but not as much. 
So they are less like the Lord. And the angels of the natural heaven, the lowest heaven, they love the Lord, but less. And so they are less. Beauty has to do with perfection. Were you born perfect? Are you ever going to be so perfect that you're God? Good answers. <laughs> but yet we're taught, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And when Jesus said that he knew no one could be as perfect as the God, it's striving to become perfect and more perfect and more perfect and more perfect, to become more and more like the Lord. We're born with the image of the Lord, with the possibility that we can become like him. The life of religion is the life that leads us to be like him. And depending on where we end up in heaven, we become more like him and so more good looking. So the last word I want to share with you children is the importance of radiance. The sun radiates heat and light. The wife's face radiate blazing light so the Swedenborg couldn't even describe it. Because that's beauty. So, so beauty is love radiating out of the face of a person. Who's more beautiful? When a person is genuinely nice and smiles, or when the person is nasty and grimaces? That smile turns to radiance. It's love that expresses itself in beauty. So the writings tell us that true beauty, genuine beauty, is love expressing itself even in the way that we appear. Amen. Children, bow your heads. The Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Amen. I have one more reading from the uh, New Testament, and then we turn to the heavenly doctrines and passages about image, likeness, and perfection. This is from Matthew chapter 19, the story of the rich young man. Now behold, one person came and said to Jesus, good teacher, what good thing should I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. The young man said, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come, follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He wanted to be perfect, but he wasn't willing to follow what the Lord said. The Lord could have been more direct and said to him, so when the young man said, what do I still lack? What could he have said? Love. What do you love? Do you love to help others? Do you love to help the poor? Or do you love your treasures? And guess what, which one the young man chose? He loved his possessions. So he could not be perfect. It's all about love. The image is the possibility of love. Likeness is love personified. And when love is personified, it is perfection. 
So now here are some passages from the heavenly doctrines about these subjects. From Divine Providence. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in these passages, there are some on the table in the uh, reception area. Sound reason dictates that all are predestined to heaven and none to hell. For all are born human beings, and consequently, God's image is in them. God's image in them consists in their ability to understand truth and to do good. The ability to understand truth comes from the divine wisdom, and the ability to do good from the divine love. This ability, which is God's image, remains in any spiritually sane person and is never eradicated. Hence it is that he can become a civil and moral person, and one who is civil and moral can then become spiritual. From our Canis Celestia. As regards the image, an image is not a likeness, but it is according to the likeness. It is therefore said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Such an order has been instituted by the Lord that higher things flow into lower things and so present an image of themselves. What is higher flows into what is lower and presents an image of itself. It's not itself, but it's an image of itself. Thus, they are in order from the highest, which is the Lord. The closest image of the Lord is the inmost or highest or celestial heaven, which is the heaven of innocence and peace. This heaven, because it is the closest to the Lord, is called his likeness. The next heaven, the spiritual heaven, is an image of the Lord. The celestial heaven is a likeness of the Lord. The spiritual heaven is an image of the Lord. Likeness, image. The more interior, this is also from Arcana, the more interior heavenly things are, the more perfect they are. For all perfection increases toward the interiors, and all perfection is from good, that is, through good from the Lord. Divine providence again. It is known that the human being was created in the image and after the likeness of God. But let us say what the image and likeness of God are. God alone is love and wisdom. A person was created to be a receptacle of divine love and wisdom, his will to be a receptacle of divine love and his understanding a receptacle of his divine wisdom. These two receptacles are in a person from his creation. A person being the image of God, therefore, means that he is recipient of the divine wisdom, and his being a likeness means that he is a recipient of divine love. So wisdom is like an image of the Lord. Love is like a likeness of the Lord. Now, it seems like we're talking about three different things, celestial heaven, spiritual heaven, love, wisdom. Although the angels are continually perfected in wisdom to eternity, their wisdom even cannot be so perfect that they can be in any ratio between their wisdom and the Lord's divine wisdom. For the Lord's divine wisdom is infinite and the wisdom of angels is finite. So no matter how perfect an angel becomes, he can never be as perfect as God. From this it is evident, those are perfect when the Lord is in them. And to the extent that the Lord is in them, they are perfected. The activity of divine providence continues to eternity. For every angel is being perfected in wisdom to eternity, each according to the degree of his affection for goodness and truth in which he was when he left this world. It is this degree that is perfected to eternity. The wisdom is perfected because he has a love for wisdom. His love is perfected because he has a love for being loving. That's what's... uh, So the ability to be wise and the ability to love are the likeness of the Lord. The actual being wise and loving is the likeness of the Lord. Receiving his love and wisdom and appropriating them, making them their own. 
how does this work? You know, I thought every angel was a likeness of the Lord, including a spiritual angel. It even says that. And yet it says that the spiritual heaven is an image of the Lord. It's a matter of comparison. When you have a hierarchy of things, the higher something is, the more it is like the Lord. The less high it is, the more it is an image of the Lord. So when you compare a higher thing to a lower thing, that higher thing is a likeness, the lower thing is an image. We're born natural. We could become spiritual. Spiritual higher than the spirit, uh, natural. So the natural is a likeness, the spiritual, I mean, and the natural is an image, the spiritual is a likeness. So it works in all those things. The image and likeness of the Lord. And being perfect, even as our Father in heaven is perfect. It's a matter of process. Acknowledging that we need the, the goodness of the Lord's love, and we need the truth of his wisdom. And if we love those things, we will be perfected to eternity. Now, I would say there are very, not too many people even born and raised in the, uh, the doctrines of the new church. If I were to ask you, and I'm not, do you regenerate forever? Or is there a point in which you stop regenerating? Think about the answer. A lot of people think yes, and the answer is no. Regeneration gets us into heaven. If we love obedience, obeying the Lord's commandments, we become a natural angel. If we love above all loving the neighbor and serving the neighbor, we become a spiritual angel. If we love the Lord above all else, then we become a celestial angel. So regeneration is rising up to become more and more like the Lord and therefore more and more perfect. But once you have committed yourself, once you have confirmed a ruling love in you, that's the whole nature of a ruling love. A ruling love is a love that will rule your lives forever. If you love wealth, like the young man, you can't go to heaven. Because that's love of the world. But if he sold his things and gave to the poor, because he loves to help the poor, that's loving the neighbor. What do you love above all else? All your other loves will either subordinate, come under the, guide, the ruling kingship of your ruling love, or would rebel and have to be removed. So if you have a good ruling love, all your good loves are like loyal subjects to the king. But the evil loves are like rebels who want to overthrow the king and put up a new king. But once you've confirmed yourself in your ruling love, that's the thing. What's the difference between a bachelor and a confirmed bachelor? A, a bachelor is a man who's not married. A confirmed bachelor is a man who will never marry under any circumstances. He's confirmed himself. The difference between an atheist and a confirmed atheist is that there are a lot of people who claim to be atheists, and they might be, but until they've confirmed themselves in that atheism, there's still hope. But if they confirm themselves in atheism, they won't change their mind. That's the nature of confirmation. So once you have your ruling love and you've confirmed that love in you, it's yours forever. But every love can be perfected. So regeneration is the process of getting into a heavenly society of your choice. But that love is then perfected to eternity. How? The teaching is this. Truth qualifies good. Good is more important. But every angel learns more and more truths to eternity. There are sermons. There are classes. There are conversations with other angels. Angels are constantly learning truths that they didn't have before. And when they make those truths their own, the love that they have becomes qualified. That is, more perfect. 
So every angel is perfected to eternity. So you can say there is a process of becoming like the Lord, which is a form of perfection. And once you become like the Lord, you're perfected in that likeness to eternity. The angel wife that I described was from the most ancient church, the earliest church. We have no idea how long she's been in heaven. There's a debate upon when was the most ancient church in this world. All we know is that she was one of the first people there. So not only is she a celestial angel, but she has been perfected in her love since the time that she got there. So eons and eons of perfection. It's no wonder she was drop dead gorgeous. And the point is that she'll become more and more beautiful to eternity. Because beauty is love expressing itself in physical form. So when the Lord said, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, he knows you can't be like God. But try to become more and more perfect. Who benefits from your perfection? You do. People you love do. The world does. Because by bringing the Lord into your life, you share the Lord through your faith, your charity, and especially your good works or uses. So as we become perfect, we help the Lord perfect his kingdom in heaven and on earth. It becomes more and more perfect to eternity. The celestial heaven becomes more and more like him to eternity. The spiritual heaven becomes more and more like him to eternity. The natural heaven becomes more and more like him to eternity. So it's a continuous process. So my parting words to you today is strive to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen.